cos squared, the way I'm going to take care of this guy, integrate him, is I'm going to remember my double angle formulas, right? Um, just put this off on the side here. Cos 2 theta, that's cos squared minus sine squared. So I want you to remember that I can get rid of one of these sine squares because using the Pythagorean identity, these are interchangeable, right? So this is actually cos squared minus 1 minus cos squared, right? That's why I substituted for sine squared there. So looking for the double negative there, this is what I'm getting, okay? Now, what I want is to substitute a cos squared, which, I'll, which I have, to some cos 2 theta business. So all I need to do is to add 1 to both sides. So you can see I could add 1 like that. And then all I need to do now to make cos squared the subject, so I can do my substitution, is to divide by 2. So, so this is the result I want. So therefore, my integral I'm now continuing over there is 9 times 1 plus cos 2 theta on 2 with respect to theta. Already changed the variable in the direction long ago. And I might as well take a factor of a half out. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually integrate now because I can really do this. This is a form I recognize. So I've got my 9 out of 2 out the front. 1, when I integrate it, becomes theta. Cos 2 theta is going to become, this is reverse chain rule, so this looks like it's going to be a half sine 2 theta, right? Um, plus a constant because it's indefinite, you just mentally check. If I differentiate this, will I get back to cos 2 theta? The 2 will come out the front, cancel with the half, sine becomes cosine, looks good, okay. Uh, this is excellent, but, that is, so I've integrated, but it's, it's not, answering the question, because the original question had nothing to do with theta. I introduced theta to help me go through the actual process of integration, to deal with the calculus bits. But now that I've done that, I've got to get back to x's, okay? So, how am I going to do that? You've got to return to your original substitution, this guy. And we're going to have to do two things with him to completely retranslate this back into x's, okay? The first bit is the easy bit. How do I get rid of theta? Well, to make theta the subject here, I'm going to have to rearrange a little bit, and I'm going to have to use my knowledge of inverse tree. I can say sine theta is equal to x on 3. So therefore, in the right domain, and we'll talk about this in future examples in more detail, because it is important. In the right domain, I can take sine inverse on both sides, and I get this guy. Okay, So that's nice. I'll be able to take care of theta there by substituting it for that. But how do I deal with this? This is a bit icky, right? My original function is in terms of a single theta, not in terms of two theta. And we know it's not just as simple as, oh, I'm gonna put two there, I can put two there. We know from all our work with um, tree, the double angle formulas, compound angle formulas, not that simple, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Before I go ahead and start translating all this back into x's, I'm gonna say, look, if I Look at this guy. I want to get it back from double angles into single angles. Well, I'm just going to use the double angle formula for this, right? The double angle formula for sine is 2 sine theta cos theta. Now, immediately, I see some progress. This is already better than what I had before because, well, I mean, I can cancel these um, constants. That's not that important. But look, sine theta. I know what sine theta is. It's uh, x on 3. I can take care of that. But what's cos theta? How am I going to deal with cos theta? Now, I already have something written for cos theta on the board that I could substitute. It's this line here, uh, if I divide by 3. I could use that, but this is not going to help me, right? Because what am I trying to do? I am trying to get rid of thetas, replace them with x's. If I substituted this in, which is dx on the theta, I'm putting another theta in for the one that I'm taking out. This is no help at all, okay? So instead, what I need to do is I need to appeal to a triangle. I have to say, look, if x is equal to sine theta, or sine theta is x on 3, I can draw a triangle that's right angled, and again, we've got to be careful with domain restrictions, but I'll talk about that in a future example. I can draw a triangle which has theta in it. If sine theta is x on 3, that's opposite on hypotenuse, and you can use uh, Pythagoras here to work out that the missing side is 9, uh, square root of 9 minus x squared. So therefore, if I'm looking at um, sine theta, I know what that is. If I'm looking at cos theta, it's adjacent on hypotenuse. That's what cos theta is. So I can substitute that in by saying in this triangle, cos theta is equal to this. Okay, so now I'm ready. Now I have all of the pieces. I can say all of 
plot by thetas, I go to become x's in a second, right? I've got my 9 out of 2 out in the front. I already know that theta is sine inverse of, etc. So you can see one of the reasons why, even though the substitution I did to actually integrate this is just a regular trig one, but where it lands you is inverse trig, because you've got to undo that substitution. So that's why we're waiting until now to learn this. Sine theta, I already know that's, that's um, x on 3, so I'm going to put that in there. And then cos theta, which I just determined, is here, so I'm going to multiply through by that. That is the square root of 9 minus x squared on 3, plus my constant. Okay? <sighs> We're basically done. Um, there's a little bit to tidy up, which is that you can see um, this is a bit of a kind of a royal mess. If what I do is um, there's, a, there's a factor of 9 down the bottom here, which I can see I can cancel. So if I put that 9 inside the brackets, I'm going to get 9 sine inverse of x on 3. This 9 and this 9 will cancel, which leaves me with x root 9 minus x squared. And don't forget your constant, okay? <sighs> Exhale, okay? That was a lot of work, and there were lots of little traps and weird things in there. It's worth looking and saying, this is a weird result, right? Like, we were expecting something simple related to a semicircle. Why is it such a, a royal mess, okay? Well, I want you to uh, return to the original problem which is a semicircle over here. Right? Let me draw a bigger one for you. What has this now allowed us to do? Okay, What we now see is if we have a semicircle, like so, now that I've done all of this calculus, right? if I want to integrate over any particular um, interval, I now have the machinery to do it. Right? I could say go from um, any, any weirdo values that I like, not just convenient ones like negative to three or zero to three, I could say, go from, if this is 3, I could, for instance, go from 1 to 2. Okay, so let's, let's draw that. I could say, okay, what is this area in here? Okay, now just consider, if we didn't know calculus, how would you go about finding this area? Because surely it's, a, it's, it's possible, right? Um, when you think about it, what kind of shape is it similar to? It looks a lot like a trapezium with a curvy bit on there. Uh, what's different between this and a trapezium? And the answer is, the difference is this part in here, right? And that's a segment, okay? So I could work out the area of that trapezium. How would I do that? I'd need to know this length and this length. How would I do that? Well, I'm gonna need some angles in here and I'm gonna have to, I could substitute in. Like this, this is the square root of, um, the square root of 9 minus x squared. So when x is equal to 1, uh, this value up here will be the square root of 8. So that's that length. And when x is equal to 2, um, you're going to get 9 minus 4. So over here, this is the square root of 5. You can see that this is starting to get icky, right? These square roots are where these appear, yeah? How am I going to work out that guy in there? Well, to work out the segment, I'm going to have to do something like this, right? I'm going to have to work out what this angle is in here. Then I can work out the area of the sector, take away the area of the triangle, and then that will give me that, that small green sliver. And doing that is going to have to invoke this guy, right? So you can see, even though this looks messy, the messiness of this that came from calculus accords exactly with the messiness of the geometry if you try to do it without calculus, okay? So in summary, all that practice that we did with you know, integration by substitution and, and working out how to change the variable and so on, it sort of unlocks all of these problems, which are much more challenging, okay? Um, as I mentioned, as Extension 1 students, you will very commonly be given the um, suggested substitution. Extension 2 students, you're going to be expected to kind of identify that yourself through greater familiarity with what you're doing, okay? <sighs>